Books, books, I like books. I'm going to read them all. Hi readers, Chris here. Welcome to my channel where I review fantasy, Stephen King, all sorts of books. And today I am reviewing a couple books that are a bit different, or at least different for me, and that is going to be indie poetry. Yes, that's right. I actually read two indie poetry books back over the summer. So the books I'm going to be talking about today are Immortalized in Ink by N.P. Hunt and Voices of the City by Gareth Howells. Both of these books are definitely outside of my comfort zone. In case you didn't know this, I'm not a poetry reader. I'm not really a poetry lover. I'm just not into poetry, like it's not my jam, it's not my thing. But I have read at least, I think I've read two poetry collections within the past year or two, and I wanted to give these two a try. Specifically, Immortalized in Ink, NP did reach out to me over on Instagram and offered to send me a copy of his book, which I accepted. So he did send this one to me. And then Voices of the City, this one I ended up purchasing on my own because, in case you didn't know, Gareth actually has a channel here on YouTube book songs and other magic. I will link his channel down below. But when I heard that he had a poetry collection, I decided to go out and buy it and give it a try. Now, if there is one thing that reading these books has taught me, it is that there is a very wide range when it comes to poetry. And I know that probably sounds really silly to some, but again, as someone who's like relatively new to reading poetry, I just, it was just so surprising how different these two collections are. They're different in style, they're different in tone. And like, yeah, like I know in my head that like, of course there's different types of poetry, but actually seeing it and reading it was a really interesting experience for me. And I'm gonna say educational. I think educational is the right word. Reading these books taught me something. So I do want to talk about these books uh, independently. So I'm going to start with uh, Immortalized in Ink. And first, again, if I haven't said this before, I will say it again. Thank you, NP, for sending this to me. If I remember correctly, when NP first reached out to me about sending me this book, he was very sweet about it, and he was very, like, I almost want to say shy. I hope that's the right word. Uh, but he was very like, you know, only read it if you want to. If you don't like it, it's okay. Um, but I'm here to say like, I did like it. I did like it. And I love that despite how small this book is, there are a ton of poems in here. Not only are there like a ton of poems in here, but there's a lot of different like styles and subject matter. And I think when you have that, it makes it easier to digest because even if you don't like a poem on one page, then you could flip to the next page and find one that you really, really like. As you can probably see, there are a bunch of tabs on this book because I, as I was reading it and going through it, I quickly realized that there was a lot of good stuff in here. So the way that I set up the tabs in this book were basically for three categories. One was any poem that I kind of instantly liked and enjoyed. Those are my favorites. Uh, my second tab was for anything that I found really interesting. So either an interesting subject matter or just the style was interesting. Something that I was like, huh, that's really interesting. <laughs> and then the third uh, tab was for poems that I found sad. Ones that were really emotional or elicited some type of feeling from me. Because... Um, this book does deal with a lot of, I want to say like mental health stuff, um, anxiety, depression, you know, that type of stuff, which obviously poetry can be a really good outlet for. But not all of the poems in this book are about that though. Like there's some other more hopeful stuff too. So I hope NP, you don't mind, but I'm just gonna pick one of my 
favorite poems to read so that I can give everyone just like a little taste of what the poems are like. I really enjoyed this poem called The Performer because I feel like some of the things in here are like universal themes that anyone anywhere could understand. And so I give you The Performer by N.P. Hunt. I was a child performer, but not on film or TV screens. I was a singing, dancing, acting star, just not one you would have seen. My stage was family living rooms, but they were arena shows to me. No obscure role and no audience was ever too small to please. I was a child performer in classroom choirs and church hall plays, living for a spotlight where I could play away my days. On high school stage and playground fields, wherever I found roles, wherever there were laughs to steal or stories to be told. I was blind to ridicule and to mockery and sneers, but you were sure to emphasize that I'd been wrong for all these years. You made sure to bring my confidence right down to match your own, and I learned that making laughter made me a fool now that I am grown. Only later I saw through it and realized your poisoned view was actually nothing to do with me and everything to do with you. You made me think that laughter was always meant to be cruel, but you're not clever enough to be funny, so in your case, it rings true. So now I'm free of your hatred for the expressive things I did, and maybe I'll recapture the spirit of that performing kid. I'll feel no shame for performing, although not as naturally as before, but I was a child performer, and I'll climb onto the stage once more. And though my audience is small, I never wanted to be a star, just to be a performer in the warm confidence where spotlights are. So do you see what I mean? Like, I feel like we were all kids who perform in front of family, universal theme. There is some like, obviously there's references to bullying in here, but then it also has like a really hopeful, uplifting ending. So I really enjoyed this one. It really spoke to me. Definitely brought me back to the days of like singing Disney songs with my family in the living room. Um, so that's just a little taste of Immortalized in Ink, again by N.P. Hunt. I really enjoyed this one. So next up we have Voices of the City by Gareth Howells. And this book is so different from the last one. So, so different. And I really appreciate and respect this book for being different. I really do. I, I mean that. And I'm just going to read to you what it says on the back of the book because I, I feel like this explains the book best. And it says that this is a poetry collection where all of the poems were written around a theme. These poems together make up the characters of a fictional city. They represent all walks of life, all aspects of life, and all ages. The concept behind the book is to paint a portrait of a community's thoughts, concerns, fears, habits, and secrets through poetry. So what that means and like actual, what that actually means is that every single page in this book is a poem about a different character. So every page we have a poem for Anna, a poem for Katie, a poem for John, and every single one is supposed to be a poem about a person in this city and kind of what they're going through, what they're struggling with. So the poems are very, very short, incredibly short, incredibly quick. And I will say that at first it was a bit jarring because it, it wasn't what I was expecting and definitely not something that I've had any experience reading before. But once I got used to it, obviously there were some things in here I did enjoy. For this book, I only did two different types of tabs. And again, um, one of the tabs was for my favorite poems. I have a couple favorite characters in here whose poems slash stories I really enjoyed. And then again, I also did a tab for ones that I found particularly sad and emotional because I do feel like 
for the most part, all the poems in here are about people's struggles and people's fears. Like there's not too many about um, people's hopes and dreams. So it kind of feels like, gee, isn't there anyone happy in this city? But like, I get it. Like no one is happy 100% of the time. So these poems just focus on the struggles and, you know, that type of stuff. The other thing I want to mention is that Gareth, I know having been subscribed to his channel is that he is a very talented musician and I know music plays a big part in his life. So part of me wonders if like some of these poems have a very musical lyrical quality to them and Maybe you've already set some of them to music before. I, if you have, please let me know so I can link it in my video description. But I want to read one poem in here, um, one poem in particular, that I feel like that lyrical nature really comes through. So uh, funny enough, and I'm sure this is probably on purpose, the character that this poem is about is called Gareth. Um, I assume, Gareth, it's about you, so I hope you don't mind me reading this, but this was one of my favorite poems in the book because I can really feel the, the music behind this poem. So this poem is called Gareth. It's no good telling me I'm not gonna move. Got a past to build from and a future to prove. Every single knock puts me in my place, the place I'm going head first. It's a place I'm going head first. It's no good telling me there's nowhere to go. Got a plan to change and a world to know. Every single turn takes me to the place, the place I'm going head first. It's a place I'm going head first. It's no good showing me the finish line. I've heard the alarm and seen the warning sign. Every day puts me in my place, the place I'm going head first. It's a place I'm going head first. I'm going to live my life head first. Like it literally sounds like a song with, you know, stand up, stanzas and a, and a rephrase here. So I think that's kind of neat. Um, so yeah, comparing this with Immortalized in Ink, again, very, very different. I can't say that one is better than the other because, because they're so different. Like that's not a fair comparison. So yes, technically there was some more poems in this one that I enjoyed. However, there was also a lot more poems in here that I enjoyed, if you know what I mean. So I would say if you are someone who is really into poetry, definitely check both of these out. If you're someone like me who's not into poetry or you don't know what kind of poetry you like, you should still check both of these out. Again, they're really good in their own ways. Um, and at the very least, again, I definitely learned what sort of poetry speaks to me more because I read these books. So in that sense, I it really, really helped me. And that is something that I can say that I learned this year. So that is all for me today on uh, Poetry Immortalized in Ink, Voices of the City. So now I wanna know from you, um, if you have read either of these books, let me know. If you are into poetry, let me know what kind of poetry you like. Do you like long poems? Do you like short poems? Do you like lyrical poems? Poems that rhyme? I'm usually a poems that rhyme person, but that's because I'm a novice and I don't know any better. But uh, <laughs> let me know all your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, please subscribe to my channel for more bookish stuff coming your way soon. All right, everyone. Happy reading.